time-lapse sequence. What's a time-lapse? Well, it's just a series of ordinary still images, but they play together really, really quickly and create a video. And it's incredibly straightforward to do, just needs a little bit of setting up. Now, we're gonna play the, the pictures back at 24, or possibly 25, or even 30 pictures per second, or frames per second. That means we're gonna need hundreds of pictures, and they've all gotta be exactly the same, but they need something moving through the scene to make the time-lapse work. So, that could be moving clouds. I haven't really got any of those today, but fortunately, I'm in New York, so I've got moving traffic just down there. So to get this to work, you need a few pieces of equipment. First, most essential, biggest bit of equipment you're gonna need, tripod. Okay, so the tripod is vital because during the time-lapse sequence, your camera must not move at all. And this could go on for, well, this is gonna go on about 20 minutes, but it could go on for hours. Some time-lapses go on for days or even longer. And during that time, the camera has to be rock solid steady. So that's why we're using our, our tripod today. Next, you're gonna need a camera, and you can do this with, with lots of different cameras. I'm gonna use my Canon 60D, but if you've got a camera, have a look in the menu. Somewhere hidden in the menu might be something called an intervalometer, or maybe just time-lapse. If so, great, you're sorted. I, I don't have one of those. In the Canon, you don't get one of those. But what I do have is this little IO shutter cable that connects my camera to my smartphone. Now this cable is really useful. It doesn't just do time lapse. There's a whole bunch of things that it can do. But for today, we're gonna to just use the time lapse function. And it's gonna make my life so much easier. Now I know I want my shots to happen five seconds apart. That's about enough time to see some movement in the New York traffic. Bearing in mind it's rush hour, it's not really moving that fast at the moment. So five seconds means that over a minute I'll take 12 pictures. Over two minutes, I'll take 24 pictures. And if I play my time lapse back at 24 pictures per second, two minutes of the real world is compressed to one second of video. And that should give just about the right movement for this scene. And it's a great easy place to start if you're new to time lapse. Now, if you are new to time lapse and you want to take this even further, do go and check out the time lapse videos on the Adorama Learning Center. Rich Harrington did a great series of really in-depth information, and it's well worth a look. So let's talk about camera settings. I wanna be in manual for as much of this shoot as I possibly can. So we'll start with the obvious stuff. The obvious stuff means that I can switch from aperture priority mode into manual mode, and that means I can take full control of the shots. Now the shutter speed I'm gonna use is probably the most important bit of this because I want a shutter speed which blurs the movement. Okay, so it doesn't blur everything, I just want the things that are moving to be very slightly blurry. Not so blurry that you can't see them, but just a little bit of blur in the movement. So I'm gonna go with a shutter speed that's fairly low down, and then all I need to do is choose an aperture that matches and an ISO that balances everything up. And once I've done that, I'm kinda of good to go with the settings because every picture will have exactly the same exposure. Now, obviously, if you're shooting a scene where the lighting is changing, you're gonna need a more dynamic approach to setting your, your camera up. That's a bit more advanced. For this tutorial, I'm shooting a scene where the lighting is gonna be exactly the same for the next 20 minutes, half an hour or so. Okay, so my shot's framed, my camera's set, everything's ready to go. I can start my time-lapse sequence going on my smartphone, and it's gonna take a picture every five seconds because that's how it's set up. But what I'm gonna do is photograph my hand. So, wait for it, there you go. <laughs> the first picture of my sequence is my hand. Why have I done that? Well, very simply, when you look at a great big list of images, it's hard to know where your time-lapse starts and stops. You may have taken some test pictures and they might be out of sequence. Remember, you need that, that nice sequence of pictures to get the flow of movement. So when you see a picture of your hand in the sequence, you know that that's the beginning of your real time-lapse. Another good tip is when you get to the end of your time-lapse, wherever that might be, put your hand in again for that last shot and you can grab the two pictures in between. Now, because I'm gonna be doing this for two minutes of real world becoming one second, 
If I want a time-lapse sequence that's about 10 seconds long, that means I need to leave this running for 20 minutes. Obviously, if you want a longer time-lapse, you leave the, the camera set up longer. And if you're leaving it set up, make sure you're somewhere secure. I mean, I'm in the hotel here, I'm in my hotel room, so I don't think anything's gonna happen here for the next 20 minutes. But obviously, if you're doing this outside, then you can't walk off and leave your gear. Another thing as well, don't touch it. <laughs> don't go anywhere near it. Walk away. Try and avoid any vibrations around your tripod. Anything that might ruin your sequence by having even the slightest movement needs to be avoided at all costs. So I'm gonna go and get a muffin and a uh, cup of tea and we'll come back and we'll see how the pictures go through. So join me in Photoshop in just a bit. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. Well, I had to wait a couple of hours, but then the weather cleared up, the sun came out, and I got a great time-lapse sequence. Now, I shoot everything in RAW, including the time-lapse, so my first job was to get my images into Adobe Camera RAW, or you could use Lightroom, and make sure that they all had exactly the same white balance, that's important, and any other changes were repeated on all images. Then I saved all of my RAW files as JPEGs, and we're ready to make our time-lapse. Now I'm going to use Photoshop CC, although you could do this in Photoshop CS6 in exactly the same way. In fact, it is incredibly simple to do a time lapse in Photoshop CS6 and CC. Watch this. First thing we need to do is see something called the timeline. Now that's a sort of a video thing, so if you can't see it by default, just change your workspace space to motion and you'll see the timeline pop up. Then we need a blank document file new, but we don't want a photographic document, we want a film and video document. Now if you're not really familiar with film and video, there are two that you're going to be interested in, HDTV 720p or HDTV 1080p. I'm going to go with the 720p because that matches my final requirement, and then I'll click OK. Next thing to do is to click on the video timeline button, okay, make sure it's not the animation timeline, it does have to be the video timeline. Now remember we were talking about the 24 pictures over two minutes? Well, this is where that becomes really important. I'll click on this little option button here for a menu. Let's move it up so you'll see what pops out. And from there, I can choose to set the timeline frame rate. By default, it's 29.97. I'm gonna drop it down to 24. Now that's an important step and one you don't really want to miss. It doesn't matter if you miss it out, it'll simply mean that your time lapse will run either faster or slower. So if timing is important, make sure you do that step. Okay, we'll click the OK button and we'll move this down and we're ready to add in our still images, all 240 of them. Now to do it, I simply go to layer and then I come down to video layers and choose new video layer from file. Now these are all the JPEGs that I saved out from my RAW files, and I'll click on the first one. You'll notice the image sequence is ticked, and when I click open, they'll all come in as a video time lapse. Well, it's there it is. Don't believe me? Well, hit the space bar or the play button, and that will play through as a time lapse. It just works, it's that simple. Now the trouble is, of course, this is the wrong size, there, there's, this is cropped, it's not, not right, it doesn't fit my blank video format. So what do we do? Well, if this was a photograph, how would you make your photograph smaller in Photoshop? Yeah, you'd use free transform. Forget the fact this is video, it's still free transform, it's still Photoshop. So to make it smaller, all I'm gonna go to is edit and choose free transform, a box will pop up saying this needs to be a smart object. Okay, no problem, convert. And there it is, there's my handles. Let's shrink it in and it'll fit beautifully in there. There we go. Click on the tick, oh, we can even go a little bit tighter. That's perfect. And that will resize my image. So now I've got maximum amount of space for my time lapse. Remember, still images are much larger than video files so that you have the ability to crop in and crop out if you need to. Now, when you play it back the first time, you will notice it runs really jerky, not very smooth, but the second time and then after, it'll play perfectly smoothly once it's rendered into Photoshop's memory. So how do you get it out of Photoshop? Well, that's important, so here's how you do that. Click on the little option menu flyout option again and choose to render the video. 
Now you can give this a name of your choice on a location of your choice, but the important thing is the format. H.264 is kind of the, think of it as the JPEG version for video. It's compatible with everything and it's the one to choose. Your preset is vital, of course. Remember we chose 720p, but also 24 frames a second. So make sure your export format matches what you were working with all the way along. Otherwise, again, your rate of play will be different. And when you're done, click on the render button and that will save your video out onto your hard drive. So there we go. In just a few minutes, we've gone from 240 still images into a time-lapse sequence lasting 10 seconds.